everybody. Welcome to the first ever episode of Man. Making Sense with me, Ati p a t a p o n s a p a i t u n and I'm here with Mink. Come on, welcome to the show. And why are we here? Well, we're here to discuss some things that well, a lot of people are talking about these days. But um, our idea is to make it deeper mm-hmm. and more relevant, and certainly. More fun. Making sense. So we are bringing you fresh perspective, fresh and unfiltered perspective on Thai politics and other stuff. But now we are focusing on Thai politics. And today, yeah. the biggest issue that we are going to talk about, what is it, k u n m i n g Well, today we will be discussing um, the swelling um, youth movement, the youth protests that we have seen at gathering p a c e since. Um, Yeah, you know, for about two months now. Across the country. Across the country, starting from Bangkok. So we have seen that you know, big gather, you know, big gatherings of uh, people um, at various at various places. Especially on Sunday, last Sunday on 16. I think it was biggest um, 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 gathering so far since. Well, since uh, forever. The, uh, if you can remember, we're going back um, to the um, the time when. Um, You, yeah, people. Um, I think they got together um, uh, in the central bank, uh, you know, a place uh, in the location in the central bank park. Um, Lots of them are not. Oh, oh. So, yeah, so yeah. Um, so yeah, and that was um, the flash mobs. Yes. So the flash mobs now have evolved more or less into, you know, m- more established movements now. Um, so the burning question, however, is. Why? What happened? So that seems to be an ever-growing c a t c h m between generations, and mm-hmm. they can't seem to understand each other. Mm. So is that what happening? Well, um, I think there is a beginning to this, and uh, if we go back to the um, uh, um, you know, beginning of the year, um, you know, when the COVID-19 uh, um, outbreak uh, started, um, well, the, the political, um, you know. Um, scenery or the, the, the political landscape had become a little more or less subdued by what was happening. It was, you know, the infections, the COVID-19 infection going on, and we were kind of, um, being, you know, moving away from politics. And that was when we thought that, uh, you know, politics on the surface was becoming more placid. But in fact, um, underneath it, underneath that layer, that placid-looking layer. We got people, um, you know, the, the younger people communicating, um, bubbling because they beneath. do it every single day. That, that is the way of communication on social platforms. On social platforms, social media, they, they tweet every single day. They, when they get up, they do this. So um, it's become the norm, the, the communication norm now. So um, the thing about this is when um, you know they, they get together. With their friends, without having to, um, you know, be together phys- physically. In you know, they, they, they observe the, the social distancing rule, and this is what happened. They communicate more heavily through the use of Twitter, and when the Twitter is the, you know, um, the way of life, anybody, anybody who can dominate the, you know, push the agenda, they become the cult leader. They become almost the cult leader. They become almost um, the opinion leader. Yeah. Okay. So um, this is this is I think what has happened, and this is um, you know a lot of of, of the you know protest, young protesters um, they resort to this kind of communication, and um, so the political messages have been pushed or they have been presented in the um, social media network. So now, social media has dominated the the agenda of the society. It's not like back when uh, main media, mainstream media, used to dominate. Yes. So now, main media, uh, they are not the gatekeepers of information anymore, and that's why we are seeing the fear of youth who said, "Oh, main media, where are you now? Why aren't you doing your jobs and stuff like that?" What do you think about this? Well, I think that there's t h e r e s truth, certainly truth in that, because um, the mainstream media, while it is a media where you can trust, because you know we, we do a lot of uh, fact checking, um, the social media is faster, much faster. You, you cannot deny the pace at which they um, present the news, putting the news out, the information out, 
And um, this is um, the way that uh, the youth, the, the younger people, like the news to be packaged into this, you know, ready to eat, um, you know, um, package, and they and they like to consume that. Mm -hmm. And this is why they, because they it's aligned the with their and it identifies interest. very closely with their needs, with their, their their preferences. Okay, this is the kind of communication that they that that. They've been, you know, attached to, mm. so um, and they are familiar with. So. What? Isn't it what, what happened along the way? Like even in the past, when we had red shirt movement or PDRC movement, or back then, no. social media was not this powerful. Um, in those days, in those days, um, it seems to be, um, you know, quite a number of years ago. But um, in those, during those protests, you see, um, you know, a few. Um, um, mainstream media, or, or what we call the partisan media, mm -hmm. um, you know, being the channel, the medium of communication. So uh, any political communication or, or anything at all that they'd like, um, you know, people to, you know, people in that group to communicate, they go through these channels. And um, it, it wasn't so much the Twitter that they, that they were attracted to, that they used. But nowadays, they don't need um, mm. um, those you know, even partisan media. No, they have their own leaders, and then they listen they've to their these own things. Leader and they've got their own, um, and, you know, style of communication. Mm -hmm. So um, because the Twitter, yeah, they, they, they most usually um, limits the number of words. You must 120 keep, characters. You must keep your messages short, and that is when. You know, it, you left. You have to leave out all the information and, sometimes. Yes, and, and when you read it, you understand straight away what happens. Mm. But it doesn't give you, it doesn't give you the entire the, the whole picture. A hundred and plus words will not give you the entire picture. So there is an opportunity and also a risk attached to this kind of uh, communication. But you know, going back to the question of, of, of what has really happened. While you see the placid layer of you know political situation going on, you know um, at the beginning of the year, yeah. actually um, underneath it, it was very busy because there were bustling, and a lot of that communication was going on. Yeah, so I, I feel like I feel like start they felt that they were suppressed. They cannot express their voice. They have been left out of the picture. And that kind of thing was bustling beneath the surface, like you said. So now, when uh, when a thing happened, I think that was when Wan Chalom Sak Sak Sit was kidnapped and made force disappear. Mm -hmm. And that was when this movement really generated the you know the momentum that they have yes, now. Yes, yes. I think um, that was the point, one of the key points. The the um, the water check moments when they um, started to, um, to come together. Um, you know, in other words, they were you know, uh, tightly consolidating mm. those networks and, um, uh, of the youth movements, uh, most, most of the youth movements. But, um, you know, the thing is, the, the parents, because we, we're seeing that the, the longer these protests are going, you know, are carrying out, are, are being conducted, the, the, the younger mm. the protesters become, you know, they, because only three weeks ago we were dealing with what um, university students, mm. but now this week, last week and this week we see high school students, high school students. So they keep getting younger the age of these protesters. And I think this is phenomenal, actually. It because hasn't happened before that they have come out with such force, with such number, mm -hmm. and with such agenda. Because we haven't seen seems universal. It happened everywhere, and it even in the south, where these kind of things never happened in the past. Exactly, exactly. and, and, and uh, what has been, uh, you know, shocking um, a lot of the parents is mm. um, they have um, never thought mm. that their children would go to school every day when you know, they drop them in the morning and pick them up in the afternoon. This children are having these mature conversations mm. within among themselves about politics. So I mean, what happened is that? Been, you know, um, the, ma uh, the matter of the older generations. Uh, to a lot of people. Because, because 
you know, certainly in, the, in my generation, right, in the right, older generation, right. it was almost a hush hush. But that was the past, and I think that's why that's why that's one of the reason why we seem to lose touch with each other, the generation, because. Uh, older generation, they look down on younger generation, and then younger generation, they look down on older generation. You don't understand me, and then older generation say, you don't understand me. Right? That's but, this but, leads but, us. But, but, I know, but um, you have to recognize one very, very important truth about um, the existence of politics. And, and not of politics, but you know, in every, practically everything that, that, that we discuss, um, you can't stay young forever. Right. Just as you cannot stay old forever. Because you have to die. You have to die. And in 10 years, you're no longer you know, university students. In 10 years, you're no longer um, you know, um, journalists uh, covering the, um, the, the fields. Um, you, you are moving towards becoming something different. And you certainly uh, you know, accumulated, hopefully, the maturity to see things in different perspectives. Um, are you saying that they are not mature? No, I'm not saying nobody is mature because maturity. Watch what you're saying because maturity <laughs> isn't attached, doesn't come with age, unfortunately. Because mm -hmm. you've got, you know, five, you've got a 50-year-old person who is immature. We could be, you know, um, you know, saying things emo you know, based on emotional, um, you know, the, the emotional state and, and and being reactive to things that do not, um, you know, answer to reasons. Yeah, so for me, I'm not being overly uh, optimistic, but I think what is lacking in, in our society right now is empathy and respect. I think, I think it, it is um, certainly um, something that we have to bear in mind. Um, when, when, because when you lead or you participate mm. in mass protests, so the gathering of a lot of people, um, there is what we call um, the playing by years. Sort of. Mob mentality? Um, it's not really the mob mentality per se, but it is something that you tend to be bent by mm. what you think. Mm. You tend to be bent by the emotions, the, mm. you know, the collective emotions mm. that are going on around you. Okay? So um, it has happened. It is quite a typical feature. Of Red shirt, PDRC, yes. yellow shirt. A general theme, a general feature. So the the thing that we're seeing, what we're seeing right now, um, the young youth, the, 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 the youth uh, movement, the protesters, um, they're gathering force. Uh, and, and what they're doing is, um, you know, the, the parents have been quite um, um, hesitant, I think some parents. Maybe they are afraid. Because they were afraid of what will, could happen to their children. Because... And, um, and, I think um, just yesterday I was watching um, a news coverage and um, a reporter was asking um, uh, one parent who um, drove to the, um, the protest site uh, outside the education ministry um, mm. um, headquarters. And um, she, she parked her car right there waiting to pick up um, her daughter who was participating in the protest. Mm, that's nice. And um, this reporter ran um, to the car and um, sort of you know, made an uh, interview with the mother. And the mother said, and this is quite, I think, it, um, this is going to be um, a lot of what a lot of parents think. They, they reckon that their children should be given um, balanced information. Mm. Okay? If it is information, it hasn't been established as facts yet. Mm. So you don't know whether it is true or whether it is untrue. The, the important thing is you need to get two sides of the story. Right. And that's the essence of the democracy. Even you and me, we hold different opinions and perspectives, but we can sit and talk and share our views, we, uh, or we don't like each other. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> I'm I just kidding. What the mother was, was trying to say is, mm. you can't be talking all the time. You need to be listening. Right. So democracy is a two-way communication. You cannot have two people talking at the same time and calling that democracy. Okay, one thing. Coming from younger generation, I, I have some insight to share. I mean, yes. maybe you can disagree. Uh, the younger generations, they had been feeling, they felt that mm. they were being oppressed. Their voice mm. uh, hadn't been heard. And 
due to some kind of you know authoritarianism or dictatorship or whatever they they feel like they don't have freedom of expression mm. they are suppressed um, I think the, um, what should we do about that though is it true for you because for me sometimes it's true sometimes it's not because back when the NCPU uh, uh, conducted a coup d'etat yes. that was when they cracked down or you know political uh, dissidents mm. and, and that was when uh, climate the environment of politics mm. they, it, it was not as free as today but now do you think that people are being oppressed suppressed it depends on how you define the word that, you know oppress mm. suppress mm. I mean two very different words and uh, I think equally harsh to be describing the state politics um, I think um, I think right now um, we need to put that on the table, mm. lay that on the table, and then and, and get people think talking more. Mm. Um, I do agree that um, the government and the protesters, the young protesters, should come together mm. at the table. Um, that they should, they should seems support. unlikely, though, because yeah. even as we are speaking now, mm. people were being arrested. Well, um, it, it, the the thing is, when when we're there, when they're being, when people get, get arrested, we need to see. We need to just sit down and, and, and look at it, um, you know, sensibly. Mm. The charges are they? Do they justify mm. the arrest? Mm. Because we, we we get the words like um, um, you know, uh, prisoners of conscience, conscience, mm. right? We we um. They didn't kill anybody. Mm. They were driven onto the streets um, because of their, you know, political stance. Mm. This is what they believe. You cannot prosecute people. Send them to jail over their beliefs. Right? You're gonna make me cry. So, so this is this is what um, a lot of people. This is the line they use. They are the line of argument that they use, and I think it makes perfect sense. Although, although mm. the criminal, you can. When a lot of people are, you know, are living together, you need rules. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we would get chaos. But some yeah. argue that these rules were being put out by the group of people who wants to suppress the people, and that's an argument of the group. No, no, no. We're talking about um, the criminal code. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the laws that, you know, All right. that, that, that were enforced um, against the offenders yeah, yeah, every yeah. single day, and has been enforced, you know, for years. Generally. Not the crimes of thought. No, it hasn't. You know, these uh, these laws. Uh, so we do. We, we really have to separate these issues. I think. We, I think the important thing, the mystical aspect of this. But that's. The, you have to make sense. Right, but that is very hard in the climate, though. So we, we're not talking about the state of lawlessness. We, we, we were still able to enforce the law, otherwise we wouldn't be discussing right. what charges people are facing, right? I think if we can still press charges, if we can still protest, it means that the sanctity is still being maintained, although, although the justification, right, the justification is, you, you know, how do you justify issuing the arrest mm. warrants? How do you justify going about arresting people mm. on these charges? Mm. That's another story. Mm. How do you justify it? So back to your point when you said everybody has to come and sit down and talk to resolve this. Yes. I think that like, that's the only way. Will that happen? That's the only way. Will that happen? It's difficult. But Will it's that impossible happen? to do, right? When you said it's so difficult, yes, nothing is nothing is easy. But you need to be sensible and say, yes, we're going to be pursuing this path, this difficult path. But it is the only path mm. to avoiding the blood bloodshed. Will the government the listen? Uh, Mr. Prayuth Chanocha said that he's willing to listen to the people, to the students? Well, he has to, well, he has to live by his words. He has to act on his promise. Mm -hmm. He has to act on, on, on what he has, he has made us um, believe. Right? If, 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 if he's going to be convincing us, make us believe that you know, this promise of his is going to you know, become a reality, he has to act on it. Yeah, and I was talking to a very prominent figure who was who was 
a minister at some point, and he, he also think like this. He said, it should be an, an assembly where student leaders or student or youth, younger generation and older generation gather, and then you have a stage for them, set a stage for them, have and has a moderator, and then talk and discuss and, and find a way forward. Look, it, 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 it is a way. Mm. I think to me that's, 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 that's a, good, a good starting point. That is going to be constructive, certainly, if, if we can talk sensibly. And um, you've got, you, you come to the table with your demands, I come to the table with explanations. Mm. And we, we, you know, and, and, and sometimes, you know, when, when the time, the right time comes, um, we discuss it, we bring it out for discussion. Um, I think that it, you know, at least it's going to bridge the gap. Right. It's going to bring us together. Right. The two opposing, uh, the people who are on opposing sides, they bring it together. There might not be a common ground on the first discussion. Right. But there's certainly set a stage. For, for negotiation information. I think what we're lacking, and this is what driving, what is driving the protests, um, you know, intensifying the protests, is we do not have a common ground. Mm. We, we seem to be um, the same left, while the people on the other side are the right. The right okay? And they while, keep saying that each side is ignorant. While the direction that we should be heading is mm. right there. Ahead. Maybe we are old, Queen Common White. Oh, I'm, I'm certainly older. I'm, older. I'm not old. Are, I'm but, just lying. But, um, well, I like to think from my experience and from the, the news that we have covered right. so far. And this is not the first time that, we, that, we, that I have covered, that I have, uh, you know, we're discussing um, the protests. Mass but protests. the protests, they have their own purposeful, proposals. Mm. And and that obviously stands against the will of what, the government. What is different about this one, mm. this protest, is there, there is um, there is certain demands mm -hmm. that are sensitive. Three demands. Oh, you mean the other group? We've got two groups. Right, they are now one parting group, ways. One group with three demands, another group with ten. Oh, I think this is a, this is a good thing to to tell to the audience. I think so the demands yeah. are. are uh, you know, you know, um, immediate um, healthy solution. Yes. The resignation of prime ministers. Uh, a rewrite of the constitution. The, you know, persecution. Calls, um, uh, um, the rights of liberty. Basically, three. Why the other group? The other group. Mm -hmm. Basically, um, the, the the demands were about the monarchy. Mm -hmm. Right. The rules Pushing the ceiling. So this is um, these two groups. Okay. I can think. Right. Um, at this point, I can only see that there are, um, you know, groups who can go back and forth between the two, you know, sets of demands. Okay, there'll be, you know, young students. This is almost students. looks One like what ha what ha what is happening in the south, where there are different interests groups. Of course, there are different interests. Groups. So for me, yeah. I I think it would be so hard. Maybe yes. the protest leaders would not accept the, you know, negotiation by the government, whatever. Well, um, they, they, otherwise, if we do not talk, if we do not talk it out, the only path that we can see right ahead is, you know, the road to violence. We do not want that in this country. We, we live by, you know, civilized rules, mm -hmm. okay? And, and we tend to stand by that. Um, uh, don't forget that there are, you know, millions of people out there right. watching. And, and their lives will be so much, um, you know, there's going to be so much impact being generated from this if we keep the, um, the issues, um, you know, um, go, you know, carry on like this. We can't do it. There's got to be a point where we come together mm. and rationalize mm. the demands, rationalize the, the, what, what the government, the stands of this government, how, 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 how are they going to deal with that? Mm. So, so this is what um, the things that, 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 that are keeping us, you know, um, glued to the, to, the, to the media right now. You know, developments every single day, how, how, how is this going to be panning out, right. the situation? Right. Because don't forget that we have, you know, um, 
COVID-19 pandemic, which hasn't we you know, we've been told every single day we can't you know lower our guard, we can't drop our guard. And um, we have the aftermath, of, not the aftermath, but the um, the economic um, repercussions mm. uh, being generated by the COVID-19 mm. pandemic. So we've got a really tough road ahead with our you know. Uh, the, the, the other factors complicating this um, situation. So, where would this end? I cannot say. <laughs> I cannot Never say do that. I. Uh, we have to, um, you know, it, it, it wouldn't be um, quite, um, you know, truthful to be telling you. Mm. Um, I'm not certainly the, not the um, senior. I'm not a fortune teller. I can't tell you if you know or, or make you know credible predictions at this point. But um, it's got to be. The best I can say now is to come together. Tough, very tough political situation, very tough, um, um, you know, economic state mm. that we're going to be, um, um, you know, encountering in the next um, you know, quarter, three months. Which scenarios is more likely? Uh, the dissolution of the house and re rewrite of constitution, or they come together and, and you know no, negotiate. Well, it depends on on, on how long this um, protest. Um, you know, go on and uh, how much steam they can pick up, mm. um, and certainly um, how much uh, their demands will be validated by mm. uh, the, the, the people who are still watching. Right? So, uh, the, the, the government is certainly going to have to tread the path very, very carefully. And um, because you know, one single you know, um, mistake that they make could be very fatal, mm -hmm. you know, political mistake. Yeah. Um, you know, if there is so much uh, thread of corruption in the government, because we're talking about coalition government, and the government make it made up of you know so many um, politicians yeah. you know, from previous governments, you know, um, and there have been you know polit politicians or that. Right. And uh, some of them do not exactly have you know, a clean reputation. Mm -hmm. So um, we've got this a big pool of of of, of politicians. Mm. And um, we don't know what they're going to be doing or what they're, what they're currently doing that we don't know about. Mm. And, you know, if, for example, in the next two weeks, in the next month, there should be a grass allegation cropping up, that's going to be, a, you know... A tough task. Could be a fatal... We could deal with the government a very fatal task. Right. It's like, if there's another thing blowing up, I think that could be an end of the government. It, by itself. Uh, it's very, I think the government is very in a, in a very vulnerable mm -hmm. uh, state. state like a house of cards. No, 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 but you know, I think um, they, you know, being politicians, um, you can count on them to, be, to give you... They're, they're going to be showing us uh, quite um, you know, a, you know, a tactic or two mm. about how to um, keep afloat, how to keep mm. the, this um, you know, government alive. Right, and that that's pretty much sums up our first episode, Kun Ka Mun Wan. I hope we like it. I hope there'll be more people watching it. <laughs> yes. So that we can make another episode. That is uh, that is certainly our goal, and um, we'd like to keep you, um, you know, entertained about. Uh, yeah. That, that we think it's um, you know it's going to matter to. Um, us. And from my part, on my part, I'd like to show that you can hold, you can hold whatever values, opinions you have. But then at the end of the day, you can just respect each other and then come to talk. Yes. And yeah, that's why we are coming up with this show, making sense, to help you, you know, making sense of things that are happening. Yes, certainly. So see you every Friday, and see you on the next episode of making sense. Thank you for watching. Feel free to leave a comment underneath.